Hello, I'm Dr. Jaydev Panchavak. I am practicing neurosurgeon in the city of Pune and chairman at Synapse Brain and Spine Foundation. Uh, recently, we all read in the newspapers and uh, heard in news channels that uh, a well-known philosopher and thinker in India, uh, Mr. Jaggi Vasudev, also popularly known as Sadhguru, suffered from headaches and uh, brain bleeding. And uh, many of my patients asked me, uh, you know, what type of brain bleeding is this? And uh, should we, you know, take specific care in our own lives to be away from this? Should we take specific care in our own lives uh, so that, you know, if we get it, it will be uh, diagnosed in time. Now, brain bleeding is a very serious term and it frightens us all, uh, right? But not all types of brain bleedings are that serious. There are some types of brain bleeds which if diagnosed in time can be cured with neurosurgery without almost no deficit. And they have to be diagnosed properly and in time. And this entity that we heard about in newspaper, read in newspapers and heard about in the news channels is called as chronic subdural hematoma. The other types of hematomas like acute hematomas that happen because of blood pressure or because of aneurysm rupture, these are sudden serious hematomas and they can be life-threatening. Chronic subdural hematoma, on the other hand, is a very different entity. So what is chronic subdural hematoma exactly? To understand this, we have to first look at how the brain is housed inside the skull. The skull is a closed cavity made up of bone, of course. And uh, the brain in adult weighs about 1400 grams. In children or young adults, there is hardly any space between the brain and the skull. There are three membranes around the brain. And they are called as dura mater, which is the membrane most outside and nearest to the skull. Then there is arachnoid mater, and the third is pia mater. Now, the dura mater is the toughest membrane. When the brain ages, it starts shrinking. As it starts shrinking, the space between the brain and the skull goes on increasing because the skull is not a collapsible structure. Because of this, there is stretch on the blood vessels which are connecting the surface of the brain and the skull, right? And uh, with even minor or minimal movements like nodding of the head vigorously or, uh, you know, banging the head against the door frame while moving around in the house, even these minor uh, traumatic instances can cause small bleeds because of the stretched vessels getting torn. And this bleeds accumulates in the space below the dura, that is, the dura mater and the brain, there is a space in the bleed accumulates there. That is why it is called as subdural, that is below the dura hematoma. Hematoma means blood clot. Now, the body immediately stops this bleeding. But over the period of time, because it is uh, a proteinaceous uh, material, it is full of proteins and has got its own hygroscopic uh, properties, starts attracting fluid from the surrounding capillaries or blood vessels. And that is how the hematoma goes on increasing. So it is actually not the hematoma that is increasing, but the fluid is getting added in that area, which is called a subdural space. And as it is getting added over the periods of days, weeks, months, it starts pressing the brain away from the skull. And on this background, if this person has got one more minor or major head injury, there is a fresh bleeding that occurs inside. So subdural hematoma is collection of fluid, not blood. And in that collection, uh, which is, by the way, increasing in size day by day, there can be additional bleeds. That's how these hematomas or collections go on increasing. And what are the symptoms? The person initially does not have any symptoms because, as I said, in elderly, the brain is shrunken. There is a space and uh, the brain really doesn't, you know, uh, is not bothered by the blood or collection initially. As it increases in size, then the pressure inside the skull starts building up. And when the pressure builds up, there is headache. There can be a drowsiness. There can be loss of balance. And in advanced cases, one can have a weakness on the opposite side in the body, which we call as uh, paresis, hemiparesis. And the people can also have loss of control over urination or, you know, uh, they may not be able to walk properly without support, etc. In extreme cases, if it is neglected, a headache and all these initial symptoms, if they are neglected, then person can become bed bound and even can go in coma. So this is what is chronic subdural hematoma. As against acute or sudden bleeding inside the brain, this is a totally different entity. We have all heard about hypertensive bleeds, that is 
bleeding happens because of raised blood pressure bleeding happening because of raised blood pressure and that happens inside the substance of brain and this clot is serious this makes the person immediately hemiplegic it makes the person comatose and it happens suddenly over the period of minutes as against that the chronic subdural hematoma accumulates slowly as i said it is not actually a hematoma it is a collection of fluid of the thickness of let's say a lemonade varying between lemonade and thick honey this is the fluid that gets on accumulating and uh, brain starts getting compressed slowly and these symptoms start they happen over the period of weeks or months and the answer for this hematoma or collection is to drain it now this collection is surrounded by thin layers of membranes which are formed as the fluid is getting collected and these membranes are having small blood vessels which is actively secreting fluid inside so one one treats this hematoma one has to ideally remove these membranes initially the first choice is to drain it through small holes which we call as bur holes if it is not getting completely resolved or it recurs that means the membranes also have to come out then one has to do a large craniotomy or opening in the skull and remove the membranes and give relief to the brain of course the skull is kept back so there is no damage to the skull as such permanently however it is important to remember that after draining the hematoma one has to do serial ct scans to ensure that there is no active recollection of these clots because in about 5 to 6% of the patients there can be a tendency towards recollection the important thing about this blood clot though it is called as brain bleeding brain bleeding but this bleeding is outside the brain so it is not like bleeding happening inside the brain which is serious hypertensive clots which can cause sudden death though this is a bleeding this is outside the brain inside the skull it slowly goes on increasing and it is treatable that's why it has to be diagnosed in time as we know uh the case in question uh this person was having headache for some time and uh, these headaches led the mri and eventually it was diagnosed and treated in time so let us all remember this entity let us all remember that in elderly if we get symptoms like you know increasing headache loss of memory or uh, loss of balance while walking which is of new onset or uh, decrease in power on one side or loss of control on urination inability to uh, communicate properly remember things etc let's not blame everything on dementia always uh, people say oh uska to age ho gaya he is aged now and this is bound to happen no there are some treatable things and chronic subdural hematoma is one of them so the message that i want to give through this video is that we have to rule out correctable uh, conditions in elderly people when these vague symptoms happen thank you very much for your patient hearing and let us all remember this entity called as chronic subdural hematoma and that it can be treated and cured with neurosurgery i am dr jayadev panchavak neurosurgeon from pune thank you very much for your kind attention